So for this episode of Adam Answers, I'm going to be um, answering a question from Jesse Conley, who posted a comment um, in Facebook. So Jesse's question is, is there any data showing faster changes by going really deep into each difference noticed during the miracle question? For example, if my desired outcome is confidence, and I say the first difference I would notice is that I would feel stronger, and that's what skewed me into the miracle happening, by asking things like, what physical sensations tell you that you're feeling stronger seems to cause a real-time change in their internal state. Hope that makes sense. When I ask a bunch of questions about how they know they feel stronger, and I'm asked about the emotions that come up as they feel stronger, patients seem to model it and change their posture and tone, for example, as I'm watching them. So, Jesse, this is a really, really important question. And what I would say is there isn't really research that focuses directly on the question that you're asking of, does it make a difference if I ask really detailed questions like this? But there is some relevant research that I'll try to highlight. The first piece of relevant information is there was a meta summary that I helped conduct with Cynthia Franklin and a couple of other people that looked at, in essence, the process research of SFBT and what processes um, contributed to positive outcomes. And they looked at all of the, like what happens during a session kind of research to say, what stands out? And one of the things that they highlighted is that a real focus on language makes a big difference when we really hone in on specific language. And embedded in your question is, I don't just take confidence, but what I do is I add meaning and layers to this confidence. I add things like stronger, and where would you feel that strength, and what difference would that strength make? And the richer we can develop that language, the more likely it is that that language takes on some important meaning for the client. In addition to that process research that's been done, um, and if you want those articles, you just send me an email and I can send you a copy of that, that article. In addition to that, there is a meta-analysis that's been done where it looked at lots of different studies and kind of collated the information. And one of the things that this meta-analysis looked at was, does it matter how many solution-focused techniques get used, right? If I just ask the miracle question, that's like one technique. Does that impact outcomes more than if I ask the miracle question and talk about exceptions and, and do some scaling and all of those kinds of things? And one of the things that they realized is that there's kind of a sweet spot. And the sweet spot was if you use three or four different techniques, that seems to be what impacts outcomes the most. But if you go over that, you start to get kind of a negative return where it doesn't actually have much impact. And in fact, sometimes it results in less positive outcomes. So one of the things that I would say about that is, in essence, what it's getting at is um, do a few things and do them really, really well. I would say that's precisely why we came up with the diamond. And we said, in essence, you just get someone's best hope. You ask their best hopes. That's one like technique. The second technique that you could use, in essence, is to get a description. You could do a history description, or you could get a resource description, or you could get a future description. Some people might say by asking the miracle question, that's a second technique. And so I would say doing that second technique of getting a description kind of helps you move in, into the way of getting more effective outcomes, which then gets at your question, which is, so if I do that one technique and I do it really, really well, I pull it apart, I add additional meaning to it, I ask follow-up questions that are specific to that one thing, what it's gonna happen is people are gonna feel heard. In this meta-analysis that they did, they said in some sense, if you do too many techniques, what ends up happening is that the client just feels like they're a project or, they're, or you're robotic, right? It takes something away from that therapeutic alliance because now what you're doing is just throwing technique after technique after technique at them. And so by doing what you're getting out of asking these really detailed, specific questions, enriching their answers, what you're doing is you're just sticking with one technique, but you're making it really, really meaningful. 
by using their language in this way, by adding strength to confidence, by adding physical sensation to strength, what you're doing is you're communicating to them, I'm so in sync with you, and I'm so in tuned with your specific language that we're building one consistent, congruent conversation. What that does is helps them to feel heard, it helps them to feel valued, and it helps them to understand you're in sync with them. In essence, it strengthens that therapeutic alliance. Then if you go to a third technique, right, you close in a way that keeps their autonomy. You let them walk away with whatever takeaways they've gotten from this session. You've stuck to that like golden three or four techniques, but you've done it in such a way that they feel valued, they feel heard, they feel, they feel understood. But there's also a second part of your question, which is like they begin to embody it. And you're really getting at what I say all the time, which is language creates reality. As they language these things, their brain can't really make a distinction between they're just describing it versus it's literally happening to them. So it just feels like to the brain, I'm experiencing all of these things that I'm talking about. So then my behavior, my body, it starts responding as if I'm actually experiencing this thing, regardless of the fact that I'm just sitting here describing it. So it's literally as we use this really rich language that you're talking about, that that language becomes their reality. They just start to experience the impact of describing it in this way. And so they really do start taking it on. So I think you're really smart and wise to catch I start to see that they behave in a strong, confident way as they describe, describe strength and confidence. So those two things combined really, I think, help explain what you're talking about. So there isn't really specific research that says, does it have an impact in the way that you're asking? But I think there's lots of research that supports the observations that you're making. So I hope that's helpful. Um, if anybody watching this has follow-up questions about this, please feel free to send them in and I can do additional follow-up sessions about this. But in the, in the end, what I would say is keep doing what you're doing, really get specific finite language like this because it really does make a big difference.